Hey everybody, this is Farfetch for Dinner, and welcome to my new LP of Crash Bandicoot on the PS1. I haven't played this game in years, and I'm gonna I'm saying that for many reasons. One, because just seeing this title screen just brings back so many memories. It's just God, the nostalgia is overwhelming. But and at the same time, I'm saying this because I'm probably going to be very crap at this game, and I am waiting on the main menu so I can watch the opening cutscene. And uh, yeah, like I said, I haven't played this game but in Dr. years. Cortex, we have not determined the cause of past failures. I'm probably going to be crap at Moron. this. This bandicoot will be my general, and he will lead my Cortex commandos to world domination. This time I shall reign triumphant. <laughs> we are closer than ever before. Toto. Quickly, into the vortex. The Dr. Cortex, the vortex is not ready. We have no idea what it could do. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be evil. Failure again. <laughs> Capture him. <laughs> Uh-oh. Prepare oh, no. the female bandicoot. <gasps> his girlfriend. So basically, Crash falls out of his, his evil lab. And he fell all the way down onto this beach. And his job is to get all the way back up there to save her. Anyway, yeah, this is going to be a really um, a really fun LP for me because I, I love this game. I grew up with this game specifically, I never really played 2 and 3 that much, and as a result, I don't really like them as much as I like this. Uh, but I'm trying to get used to them and I can't move. I can't... I can very slightly move. Okay, let me change this. Ah, oh, that's a bit better. Yeah, um, one thing that I don't like about this game over 2 and 3 is I forgot to... come on. Crash controls really stiffly. It's kind of... kind of bad, but... Yeah, 2 and 3 they improve on this, as well as a lot of other things. And I can appreciate Crash 2 and 3 for what they are. I am starting to like them a bit more. I, I was playing it while downloading this. Because, as you know now, I am playing this on the PS3. I was um, going to play it on the PS1, and I was, pl but I was planning to LP this, and then I realised that I didn't know where it was. I think my friend's borrowing it. And I was like, no, I've wanted to LP this, now I can't. Uh, thank, uh, excuse me. Thank God for the PlayStation Store. Uh, I was able to download it uh, for about for three pound, I think, which is pretty cheap. So you should buy it if you've never played this game. And it, it, it kind of sucks for what's um, become of Crash today. It really does because Crash used to be so good. This game used to be so. I mean, Crash is made by Naughty Dog, the same people that made Uncharted. And if anything, that. I was planning to... I went that route to get those boxes. What have we got? But now I can't. Uh, if you don't know already, this game is... It's quite hard. Um, you get gems on this game. You have to kind of collect all the gems in the game. There isn't one on every level, but you get them from getting all the box on on the... Le if, you get, if you collect every box on a certain level, uh, you get a gem. You collect all the gems in the game. And when you die, all the boxes in the level reset. And this is especially hard if you don't have the Aku Aku mask. Oh my god, I've never, I've never done that right. Oh, so annoying. That's the first level as well. Oh, and there are two keys you have to collect as well. I've not, not either. until recently, I saw a review and they explained how to get the keys. I didn't even know until then. Oh, this game is so good though. It is really good. There is a level coming up in the game called Slippery Climb, and it is well. I uh, my friend Agent Atomic is LPing this, and I'm gonna try one more time. Oh God, forget it, forget it, forget it. I'm not gonna get all the boxes in the level anyway, so what's the use? And um, I told him how bad this um, Slippery Climb is in one of the last levels. It's it's horrible. It's just, it's merciless. And he's also OP in the game and he was saying, my friend told me about this level and how bad it is. And in a way, it kind of connects. I'm doing an LP talking about how I told my friend and my friend is doing an LP talking about how he was told. Kind of. It all works out. And um, my friend Agent Atomic, and his annotation's probably on screen right now, uh, if you don't, if I didn't, if I forgot, his, his name's just Agent Atomic. Um, he inspired me to LP this, 
as well as my future armor LP. So I'm kind of taking a leaf out of Agent Atomic's book right now by LPing these games. But yeah, he's inspiring me to LP older games. I've been wanting to do this for quite a while. I've noticed recently that a lot of the games have been... Did I just say review? I'm used to saying review. I've been doing a lot of re um, review work lately. I know everyone on Farfetch reviews. But... Oh, I knew I was going to die there. I knew it. I've died... I've died doing that so many times. Um, yeah, I noticed a lot of the LPs I've been doing are kind of newer generation games. I think the oldest LP I've done in a while was, um, well, the oldest game is Future Armor I've done in a while. Um, the oldest game I've ever LP'd is Spyro the Dragon on PS1, and I think this is actually older than that. Um, Spyro the Dragon came out in 1998, I think, and this game came out in 1995. I f I'm, not, I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, but I, f I think it did. Uh, anyway, yeah, those piranha plants, they seem very inspired and original, but <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, Crash does take a lot from Mario's book, he really does. Um, in Crash 3, there is a mission where you ride around on a green dinosaur, a little one. That's, well, I don't, I don't really know what else what I can say about that. It seems original, I'm sure it's very original. Uh, but yeah, the, the series is great, so I can't exactly call them out for being like, oh, it's just a rip-off. Because, just because something's a rip-off, that doesn't mean it's bad. They're all good rip-offs. Like, um, Crash Bandicoot. Wait, no, I'm playing Crash Bandicoot. Like, um, Banjo-Kazooie is, it was, well, it's it's been talked about for ages. I was just a big rip-off of, a uh, Crash. <laughs> Why do I keep saying Crash Bandicoot? Super Mario 64. And I can see why people would say that. And that like, he used to be known as like the biggest ripoff of all time, um, but it's good. I really like um, Banjo Kazooie. Actually, I, I have Banjo Kazooie and Super Mario 64. I, I have both of them, and I prefer Banjo Kazooie by a lot. I mean, I don't know if I'd have the same opinion if I grew up with the N64. But oh god, if you walk forwards or backwards, by the way, not left and right forwards or backwards, you do actually fall off the stage, which is kind of crappy. Um, and this is actually the only way you can save the game, which is also kind of crazy. It's one of the big flaws of the game. But there is also a password system, so... Uh, oh, Crash Bandicoot 2, Rayman, FFD. Wait, when, the, when was I LPing Rayman? I've never LPed Rayman. Okay. Maybe I did that for footage from my Rayman Origins review. I don't know. Um, oh yeah, I remember what I was talking about. Like I said, I don't know if I'd have the same opinion if I grew up with Mario on the N64, but I think it's just because I don't think Super Mario 64 is aged that well. While I think Banjo Kazooie has aged pretty well, it stood the test of time, in my opinion. I can't really say whether. I don't feel like I can really say that because I wasn't there when it first came out. So I, haven't, I, I didn't play it back when it was considered the best game ever. I mean, it's, I guess it still is to some people. I don't know, I don't... Yeah, I haven't grew up with it, so I'm not, I don't feel like I can really say. It, it's it, it's aged. It's not as good as it used to be, because I never played it. So, yeah. Anyway, the Great Gate. Oh, <laughs> this level. This is one of the first levels that got really annoying for me. I remember I used to play this around my grandma's. Yeah, there's going to be a bit of a, an analogy here. Not an analogy, anecdote. And um, there's a part of this song where we hear like, some native tribe going, Hello, 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 <laughs> some reason when I was little I used to think that was laughing. And I used to say, stop laughing at me, it's not funny. And Dad used to say, who's laughing? And I was like, the people on this game. <laughs> Such an idiot. Uh, I used to get so rat. I still do get ratty with games actually. And by the way, ratty is a, a British slang for annoyed, irritated. I, I try to use as, um, as little British slang as I can because, I don't know, it just seems weird. On a video that can be seen worldwide using British slang. British slang. But I, I, I don't know. The word ratty is. Unlike most other words, it's kind of ingrained into my head. But, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I still do get really right with games. Just today, uh, my mum was doing something and she was like getting really annoyed with it. And I was like, I need to get annoyed so quickly. She was like, oh, so the one who used to chew his cables. When he used to get angry with games. Not like. The, con the the cables of the consoles, like controller wise, I used to just. Uh, I remember one time, I told my friend about this recently. 
one time I got really annoyed with a game. It was like a PS2 or 3 game. I got so annoyed I hit myself on the head with, with the controller and it actually really hurt. I think it's like got such a it's got such a blunt edge. I know where like you hold it. And I just hit that right on the on the soft part of my head and it really hurt. It's like a really numb pain. Like when you you know when like when you hurt your nose, that's that really numb weird. Nose <laughs> nose pain. It's kinda like that. It's, I don't know why I did it. I don't know why, like, I don't know why I thought the best way to vent my anger was to physically <laughs> hurt myself. But I guess that's just what I thought at the time. That, that makes me think that what I, what I just did there, if the first level was in side scroller, it would have been a lot easier to get across that part with all the um, boxes in a row. But this game doesn't really go for the easy routes, really. And I'm not sure if I said this already, but I'm going to try and do this in one sitting. I'm going to try and do the whole game in one sitting, because it is... I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's short, but I can beat it quickly. I mean, it's not easy. It's not easy by any means, but... If I stick to it, I can get it done in two hours. And let's just see. Let's just see. <laughs> oh, this level... This is one of the most memorable levels in the whole game for me, as well as Hog Wild, which is a level you'll see later where you actually ride around on a warthog with some awesome music. I used to hear a lot of people saying that the, the music in Crash Bandicoot 1, I might as well just say Crash 1, was um, nowhere near as catchy as the music in Crash 2 and 3. And I guess that I can say that for the um, for the theme tune. I was just um, da 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 and I like the other ones is do 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 but I, for the rest of the soundtrack I think it actually is really catchy again I think that is just nostalgia talking there because if it wasn't for nostalgia I don't think I would remember any of these tracks but still uh, Naughty Dog have still yet to make one bad game which I really love about Naughty Dog most other companies they all, they've all seemed to make one bad game at least. The only exception to me, the only exceptions are Naughty Dog and the Valve. I pretty much love every Valve game. And but what I've played of Left 4 Dead 2, I don't really like nearly as much as any other Valve game. But I've actually bought it on Steam earlier, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give it another go, see if I like it. Yes! <laughs> yeah, I would celebrate this whole crash. Uh you've owned it. I I did perfect? Oh my god! I've never gotten a gem in my life on this game. I've never seen him do that. He looks like an idiot. Oh wow, that's brilliant. That's... How did I never do that before? That seems like such an... <clears throat> Excuse me. That was very fun. Anyway, yeah. Naughty Dog has never let me down. I mean, even Insomniac, my second favourite developer. Even they've made a bad game, um, Ratchet Deadlocked or Ratchet Gladiator, as it's known in the UK. I mean, I've never played that, so I can't really say. No, Insomniac let me down of a game I've never played. But, I, I don't know, if I, I've, not, I've never heard a good opinion or review of that game. Or oh, positive, I should say, a good review. I didn't enjoy that review, that was crap. You know, like... And I remember not seeing it in the shops back when I was obsessed with Ratchet and Clank, and I was like... No, no, I really don't want that. And I guess my my Ratchet and Clank intuition was right there. By the way, I am also well as it currently stands. I am currently uploading a few trauma LP. And in part eight, I stand on an enemy that looks exactly like this. In part eight, when I play as Bender, it's got the exact same color scheme and everything. By the way, those fish that um jump around and get jump around, jump up, jump up and get down. Those what? Those fish? I used to always call them Mr. Fishy Fish. I don't know why. And every time I died, no matter how annoyed with the... Oh! Why did I do that? I always used to call them Mr. Fishy Fish. No matter how annoyed I got with the game, I always got like, Oh, Mr. Fishy Fish! <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. I don't know where I got it from. Mr. Fishy Fish. It was, it was very creative. I'll, I'll, I'll give myself, I'll give my younger self that. It was very creative. He's a fish, Mr. Fishy Fish. Because he is indeed quite fishy, I'll, I'll have to admit. 